Okay. Here we go. So, our first video on coordinate geometry, which is a really important aspect of uh, your kind of studies for A level. It's going to be the foundation of pretty much everything you do, which involves pictures uh, and shapes. So, it's really important we get this fundamentals, these fundamentals right. Uh, what we're doing then is we're trying to find the equation of the line L which passes through these two points, A and B. Now, A must be this point here, 1, 2, and here's B, which is 5, 7. And like the question says, this line L, this line here, is an infinite line, which is an infinite set of points all plotted together. And A and B, remember, are just two of those points. Now, you know the equation of the line from GCSE is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient, which is a really important phrase, the same as the rate of change. And c, or plus c, is your y-intercept. What does that y-intercept mean? Well, it means that when x equals 0, and all these infinite number of points lie on y, on the y-axis, you know, uh, adhere to that fact. So therefore, the y-intercept means what is the y-value when x is zero? So where does the straight line cross? And you can see here it looks roughly, mm, I don't know, three over four or something like that, but we'll find out in a minute. So let's fixate on this idea of the gradient first. Um, I'm not, I'm going to ignore A and B for now. Let's just take two points any points. So I'm going to call this point P, which uh, let's call it x1, y1. And I'm going to point, uh, choose this point Q, which is x2, y2. And I have no idea where they are uh, in kind of like specifically, but generally I know where they are. So these are known quantities. So x1 could be 3 and y1 could be, I don't know, 4 or something like that. And uh, they're constants, in other words. Okay, so x1, y1, x2, y2 are constants at this point. Okay, what is the rate of change? Well, the rate of change describes the steepness of the curve, basically. So the change in y over the change in x. Now, for this straight line, you can see that the steepness is consistent, isn't it? It's the same steepness anywhere you go. In other words, I can pick any two points anywhere, and the triangle that it constructs will be a similar triangle, i.e. the steepness will be the same. The ratio of the change in y will be the, ratio, the same as the ratio over its um, length here. So... How do I describe that length? Well, we know this whole distance is the coordinate or length uh, y2. We know that this distance of p is the length y1. So it makes sense that the length of this side is y2 take y1. Similarly, this whole length, remember, has an x-coordinate of x2. So we would subtract x1's length from it to get what remains which is this side here. So therefore the steepness, the gradient, is the change in y over the change in x. So this is the gradient if we know two points and we don't know the gradient. But there's also a scenario where we know one point and we know the gradient. So let's say this point P, we know what P is, I don't know, let's say 3, 4, but we have no idea where this other point Q could be, because Q can be any point. Q is a variable point. As long as I know what the gradient is and a fixed point, I can always find the equation of the line, because remember the equation of the line is designed to tell you if you if you know what an x is, I'll give you a y. If you give if you know what y is, I'll give you an x. So wherever q is, if q is there or q is there, the gradient, the change in y over change in x, is going to be the same. So here, the gradient m is going to be exactly the same kind of deal. 
where we've got a general y this time, a variable y, because y can move around, or q can move around, minus our fixed y, which is p's y, y1, over general x over the fixed um, x from p. Okay, so this is, if we know the gradient and one fixed point. And this is where we can construct the general equation of a line it's by rearranging, by timesing up by x minus x1. So here we get y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this is a really important formula. You'll be using this all the time, and you must know this form as well as your y equals mx plus c. Okay, most things in AS level will be left in this form. So how do we specifically find the equation of the line between A and B then? Well, we've got the situation there where we know where those two points are. So M equals Y2, which is 7, subtract Y1, which is A is 2, and we've got our X2, which is 5, minus our X1, which is 1. So we get 5 over 4. Therefore, the equation of the line which remember is called L, is Y minus, so Y is a general point, Y1, which we know from, we, we can have, we can use A or we can have B as a fixed point. It doesn't matter because now we're in a position where we know what the gradient is and we have one fixed point. So let's do it at, at uh, A then, let's say. So A's uh, Y1 is 2, the gradient is 5 over 4, and A's X1 is 1. So here we go. There's the equation of L. Done. So in here we've got Y minus 2 equals 5 over 4 X minus 1. And this can be rearranged into your Y equals MX plus C form. So if we move that minus 2 over plus 2 and multiply out the bracket, that's 5 over 4x minus 5 over 4 plus 2, multiplying that out, it's going to be plus 3 over 4, and that's what we predicted. There's our y-intercept plus c, so plus c is our 3 over 4, that's where it crosses the, the y-axis when x is 0, and our gradient there is our 5 over 4, our m value, okay? That's really important for the next bit of theory, so for question 2, a line T is parallel to the line L and passes through the point C33. So let's think about that. Here's the point 33, which is C. The question's told us that if here's L, a point, the point C has a line going through it, which is parallel to L. So that's another way to denote parallel. So here's T. T is parallel to L, okay? If it's parallel, that means it's never going to cross it, which means that its triangle, which you can see kind of from my picture, its ratio of steepness is exactly the same. If it wasn't the same, then this thing would start to deviate and it would cross it at some point, either at the tail end here or the upper end here, right? The gradient, the steepness must be the same and therefore the M1 is the same as the M2. So i.e. L's gradient is going to be the same as T's. So for T, the line Y minus Y1, well, let's fill in uh, right, our Y1, we know a gradient and we know a fixed point. So Y minus Y1, where 3 is the fixed point this time, equals our gradient m2, which is the same as L, 5 over 4, x minus x1, which is 3. And there you go, there's your line. Okay. So any parallel line means the same gradient, you just need a different fixed point. Now finally, we've got this, a line Q is perpendicular to L and passes through 1, 2, find Q. Now, so here's the point 1, 2, which was A. 
it's telling us that if this is L, there's a line Q which passes through A, which is perpendicular. So Q is perpendicular to L, which means it's 90 degrees, doesn't it? If two things are 90 degrees, they're perpendicular. Ah, how do we deal with that? Well, we know L has gradient M1. And this is a positive gradient because it's going, the line is going from low to high. Q must clearly from the graph has a negative gradient. So at least we know it's a negative gradient because it's going from high to low, it's decreasing. Its rate of change is negative, right? But what about this, this bit here? Well, there's a property that you might know, which is going to seem more obvious in a minute, but like I say, if the gradient of Q is M2, and the gradient of L is M1, already we know M2 is negative M1, you can see it's different, okay, you can see it's the negative version at least, and it's actually M2 equals minus 1 over M1, so the negative reciprocal of M1, You're, I'll try and make that clearer in a minute. But if we were to try and find the equation of the line then, of Q, we, again, we have a fixed point, and now we have the gradient, which is minus 1 over 5 over 4, which from fractions, that 4 flips up, so that's minus 4 over 5, okay? So Y minus, got a point A, which is 2, equals minus 4 over 5, X minus our X1, which is 1. And there's our equation of Q. And let's analyze that a little bit more. So when uh, y equals 0, our x value, OK, I've just, uh, just pause the tape and then put in the actual thing because it wasn't quite to scale. So this is our, um, our two lines, Q and L. As I was saying, here's. L and Q, when Y is 0, so when this thing is 0, that's gone, so you're going to times minus 2 by minus 5 over 4, flip that over, and then plus 1, which gives you X equals 7 over 2, so that's 3.5, okay? So you can see here that that's 3.5. So if we just investigate that gradient, just to check that it is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> This distance here, this is our 3.5 across here. This distance, our x value, our change in x is 3.5 take away 1, which is 2.5. And our y distance, well, this y is 0, this y is 2, so uh, 0 subtract 2 is minus 2. Therefore, minus 2, which is our gradient here, so m, remember, is changing y over changing x, so minus 2 over 5 over 2, which is the same as 2.5, is minus 4 over 5. And similarly, when we've got our, if I extended this up here, our point b, which was 5, 7, so 5 is like here, isn't it, right? So if we compare this triangle, 5, 7, which we've done before, we know that our change, our gradient is 5 over 4. And you can clearly see that that 5 over 4 is the, well, the, how the gradients are connected. It's that if that's M2 and that's M1, the relationship is if two lines are perpendicular, and this is an important property, M1 times m2 should always equal minus 1. And you can see that because m1 is 5 over 4, m2 is minus, five of, uh, minus 4 over 5, that times that does give you minus 1 and therefore those two are perpendicular. So if you want to find a line perpendicular to another line, m1 is minus 1, sorry, m2 is minus 1 over m1.